Welcome back. We're going to take a look today at exercise 19, which is dealing with equations or otherwise known inside Creo as relations. Uh, and this is version 7.0. As you take uh, what you're looking at there is actually like a clamshell that you would see uh, for taking on a salad from a takeout place. Like uh, it's normally clear plastic, very thin. And you can see these uh, these ribs along here are actually built in to add uh, to reinforce the actual structure. So um, what happened is I used to actually design these years ago, and I, really the molds I used to for a short time. And uh, what we would do is uh, we'd model it just like this, but there were typically a variation of sizes you'd want to make for customers. Could be uh, you know up to a dozen different sizes. Anyhow. Um, I didn't think about this at the time when I was designing that, but later on as I worked as an um, application engineer, someone who worked in that mold, that industry, knew that I had some background in it and said, what did you used to do for the ribs? And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, the idea was um, if you put this pattern of ribs in here and then all of a sudden you want to change it or make a change, let me just roll back a little bit so we can get rid of some of this stuff here. Okay, let's just bring it back to the base part here. Now the idea is, if you ever make this wider or shorter, you don't want to have to change the number of ribs that are here, or what I call the rib stack, or the pattern. And you want it to automatically update. So here, just as an example, this is when it does automatically update. With the equation we're going to learn today, we'll do this. So we want it to actually do this. So if I double click on this and I change it to three inches, we'll see that it adds those ribs automatically onto that model. All right, so that's our goal today is to take a look at that. So it's gonna, we're gonna start off with a four by two inch block and look at how relations work inside Creel. Now in the training guide, you'll find this on page 69 on vertanu1.com. And we're gonna go ahead and start off with this block. So a four by two and it's centered. So go to new part and go ahead and label this E19. Hit OK. Now go ahead and select the top plane and go to extrude. Go to the center rectangle tool. Uh, actually, um, center rectangle is what we would typically use, um, but I want to show you some different tools in here. I want to show you a very basic equation. Now you wouldn't need this equation because of center rectangle, but I think it lets you catch what exactly we're doing, the simpler concept. So I actually use corner rectangle. Now in this lower left corner, actually you could zoom up a little bit, scroll towards the center there, and then click and drag a box to where it crosses over all four quadrants of that center. Okay, and let's go ahead and pull these dimensions out and then get them stair-stepping with one another, just like this. Let's change the, this one first. This will be two inches, and this small one will be one inch, and then this bottom one will be four inches, and this one will be two inches. And middle click a couple times, you could drag these dimensions in, and you could hit refit. And let's line those up a little bit better. They're kind of throwing them about a bit. And refit. Just so you can be organized here, because we're going to use these for our equation. Now, let's say we didn't have the center rectangle tool where it automatically centers. And so, like right now, as is, we change this width to five, you'll see it's offset. But we want to be able to change that and have it center automatically. So, let's change it to four. I'll change back to four or hit and do. Okay, now let's go and we're going to use the equations. So if you go to tools and it's called relations, see it says D is equal to relations. So click on that. Now over here, you'll see we're going to go ahead and select. We want um, this number because we want to control that one with this. This number will be equal to, so over here, use the equal to. Okay, this number divided by and type in 2 and hit OK. 
All right, so now let's try changing that. Double click on that four, change it to five, and it should automatically change it to two and a half. Go ahead and change it back to four. Let's try that again. Now let's say we want to reverse that for these ones here. Uh, and we'll use a multiplication instead of a division. So let's go back to relations. And you'll see there's our last equation. Click to the very end of it and hit enter to start a new equation. All right. And I'll move this over here. Okay, so this time we want this one to control that. So we'll click on this and then equal to. And you could use the actual equal to on your keyboard too. It's fine. Okay, so uh, this is going to be equal to this times 2. Go ahead and hit OK. Let's change that. So now watch the thing. Remember the, the, this dimension, we were able to double click and have changed that. But watch this, since we reversed it, if you double click on this, its value can't be changed because it's being controlled by this one. So double click on this, change it to three, hit enter, and you'll see it automatically multiplies that. You can hit undo or go back to two. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, one. All right, so there you get a very simple concept of how equations work inside Creo. Now let's go ahead and extrude this. So go to the sketch tab, go to OK, and we want to extrude it one and a half inches. So 1.5 and hit OK. Now we're going to put some radiuses on to make it look like that part, that clamshell. So go to the round tool, set the rounds to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so a half inch. Click on this edge here. This edge here, that one, and you can rotate and get that one there. Hit OK. Now let's flip it around the bottom side and select this bottom face, go to Extrude, go to the Circle tool, and right at this corner here where it intersects from tangent to the straight line here, uh, click on that blue dot, drag out a small circle, and then double click. Make this 0.25. Right now we could just go to OK, flip the direction, and set this right here to 1.55. So we're just going up 50 thousandths. Now go to Options here and add Taper and put in minus 1. Now it didn't remember our settings from last time, but that's okay. So let's put 1.55 and enter. I just didn't apply it. All right, and then we could see our rib. So hit OK. And now while it's still selected, we could go to Pattern. And over here, go to, instead of Dimension, go to Direction. Now select this bottom edge or this top edge, either one. That's our vector, basically, for how we want it to move across. Now the spacing here is going to be 0 0.2. And the number of instances will be 16. I pre-calculated that. See that last instance lands right tangent on that edge on the opposite side. Go ahead and hit OK. All right, we're not going to put in any of the fancy fillets or anything like that right now. We're just getting the basics done. You could dress it up later and make this enclosure if you like. OK, so now that we have those, we are ready to start our equation. So in the book, and, and I really recommend you use the training guide for this, uh, you want to go to this page, page 74, because it clearly calls out what you want to select. Now here it says P37. Remember, those numbers are derived from the order in which you create them. and uh, They're kind of behind the scene names that are given. And so we want to do our, uh, we're not really interested in knowing exactly what those are. They're going to be different from computer to computer. Oh, we forgot one important thing, this reference dimension. Oh, let's minimize. Okay, one last thing. Click here. Go to Sketch. Now zoom up on that far left one there, as close as you can get. Go to the Line tool. And see this little snap point right there? Get that blue square. Click. And then zoom up here and get the one that's closest on that rib, that point there. Click. Middle click two times. Now,
go to dimension. Now we need this for our equation to control the spacing better. So click on the line and then down here, middle click. Now it's going to give you the dimension. We don't want to change it, but notice here there's um, a conflict because it's already defined by those two points. So, but what we want, we don't really need it for what it is. Like we don't want it to control anything. We just want it as a reference dimension for our equation. So select reference. Okay, now you can hit OK. It disappears. It's all right. Let's go back here now. And let's uh, start over with our equations. So now let's go to Tools and Relations. And let's bring that training guide up again. So we want the 16, in our case, it's 16 extrusions. I Since uh, this exercise, since I wrote this, I changed it. You could still do it the way it is in the book with revolves, but I just did extrusions because I think it's a little easier than drawing the whole sketch. All right, so click on this and you'll see 16 extrudes. Select that. And mine comes up as P16 and that's fine. Yours might be a little bit different. Go to equal to. Now when we get this value back and return whatever we change the width to, we don't want it to try and give us uh, 27.369 ribs. It's not going to like that. We just want 27 ribs. We don't need a weird number like that and Creo can't handle that. So instead of typing INT, which in most other systems would be for integer, we could actually use floor. Now Creo, and I really like it, you could actually type in floor or ceiling if you want to round up or down. But um, we're going to go with floor. Now let's take a look and um, we have bracket, bracket, or parenthesis, I should say. So you could either use this parenthesis or actually, I just prefer to hold shift and hit nine. One, two. All right. And now D1, if we follow the arrow, is the four inch length. So select this top base and it should bring up the dimensions. And, and it's this one. Find the, in my case, it's D2. Yours might be different depending upon how you dimension it. So click on that D2 and go back here. Let's see. Uh, so and that's going to be minus the radius times two because see, we have two radii here, uh, which equal an inch. But if it ever changes, we want it to actually update with this properly. So whatever this value is, it automatically notes to, knows to note it. So it's the smart way via design intent or your, the plan on how we want it to update properly versus type it in just values that might change. Okay, so we have to subtract that. So type in minus, or you can hit the minus sign right here and then shift nine again and click on any of the radii, just click and you'll see you can just select one of them, it doesn't matter because they're all going to be the same. Okay, and that now times two because there's one on either side. So basically we're just subtracting that value, whatever it might amount to. In this case, one inch. All right, and I close the bracket. So a shift zero to get that last one in there. Uh, another closed bracket and then a divided by the reference. So uh, shift zero again, and then you can use the divided by right here by the references. Uh, the reference, you actually have to click over here, find sketch one in the model tree, and it should appear, and you'll see it says REF. Make sure you select that. Okay, now we're not quite done. We have a, another closed bracket, and then there's a plus one, because remember, we're rounding down. We want to have that extra. So shift zero plus symbol one. And now let's just verify it, make sure we don't get any errors. It was successful. Hit OK and hit OK. Now let's smear this over. Let's select that pattern and let's go to model, go to mirror. And the reference should be your front plane. And um, darn it, you know what? Uh, let's see here. 
something like that. Hmm, liked it last time I did it. I'm not sure. There's probably operator error going on here, and I'm a little tired, so I'm not certain why that's given me a little bit of a troublesome spot there. But let's uh, let's just not do it just yet. Okay, let's give this a shot. So double click on the surface, find the four inch dimension, double click, and let's go ahead and change it to five. Right. Not only does it center because of our equation, but look at that, it tacked on the additional instances that it needed to fit it to where it looks perfect. All right, let's go ahead and change it to eight. All right, and change it back to four. So basically there you could see how equations, AKA relations inside Creo work. And this is just one example, but I've seen equations that were pages long that did amazing things inside these parametric software. So uh, be aware, the sky's the limit with this. Uh, possibilities are almost endless if you can learn how to harness the functionality of these equations inside the software. And that concludes exercise 19.